Welcome to another episode of my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I always talk about my thoughts about a Star Trek related episode. This week I'm going to talk about the last episode of season 1 and let's pretend it's called The Search, okay? I mean, the real title is of course on screen right now, but I don't want to the word to be anywhere in my title my subtitles or the tags because YouTube isn't very keen to people who use these words so and YouTube doesn't really care about the context. Our story begins with a unique mission. Kergen Spock have been summoned by the Vedala and oh my god again what's the fascination of the animated show with giant cats? First a giant cat monster replaced Uhura on the bridge, then we have seen cats in pink spacesuits as the villains and now we have another cat race. I mean I love cats but this is a bit too much, don't you think? And what's with the cat's arms or whatever they are called on an anthropomorphic cat? It looks like the cat has been run over by a space truck or something. Somebody please call a vet, this looks painful. Anyway, Sulu and Scott beam down a Spock and Kirk, who for some reason looks like a racist depiction of an Asian man, down to the planet where they meet uh, Birdman, Lizardman, Green Goblin and Lara Croft. The Birdman Char from the race of Score explains them that the Score were great warriors two centuries ago until the great Aylar brought them peace. When he died, his brain patterns were saved in an indurate sculpture called the Soul. Now the Soul has been stolen and the Score are planning to start a war with the rest of the galaxy. I'm pretty sure it made sense in the writer's head. The mission is to go to find it on a mad planet where basically everything will try to kill them. Kerr was chosen for his leadership abilities, spoke for his analytical and logical mind, the green thing called M3 Green is there because it's a good thief apparently, the humanoid chick is there because she is a good hunter and the lizard dude is there because the cat growls and the team is suddenly transported to the planet. And they even get a car, the best Fred Flintstone mobile the cats could imagine. Before you have the chance to yell yabba dabba doo, the team has to run away from lava and here you can see why the green guy is absolutely useless. He touches the Fred Flintstone mobile and manages to cause an explosion, great work. At least the hunter woman is useful as she can find the correct direction. By the way, something really strange happens. Lara literally offers herself to Kirk and he says no. What the actual mm, duck? Kirk says no to a woman. Is it because this is a kids show? The writer Stephen Kendall wrote for Trek before. So he should know that Kirk would never say no and immediately find the time to make out with the female guest star. But thankfully Mr. Cockblock, uh, I mean Mr. Spock comes to say the vehicle is ready and they can start their great adventure. Birdman finds the location of the soul but they have to outrun the lava first. Kirk and the lizard guy throw down some rocks to create a barricade for the lava flow. Funny, the last time we have seen something like that was when Kirk was throwing down rocks at a lizard guy to kill him. The car, driven by the green guy, hits a rock and Mr. Spock flies out, only to be immediately saved by Kirk. Interesting, Kirk is not interested uh, in a woman which offers herself to him but risks his life to save Spock. I really start to understand all the gay fanfiction. The car is dead and snow starts to fall, so they have to quickly save their equipment and continue by foot. The annoying green guy just silently stands in the background, but still manages to almost die. You know, 
Why did somebody think that such a character needs to be in the story? When he doesn't mess up something or needs to be saved, he's just whining. Spock saves him. Good idea, it looks like they might get stuck in the cold. They will need food and the green guy looks delicious. That's why he's in the story, right? Spock, Kirk and Char rescue him, but instead of starting to be useful, he starts to complain and whine. Again. So the lizard guy has to carry him. They get to the building in which the soul is hidden and that is when I got really mad. They get attacked by, you guessed it, the same creatures we have seen in many other episodes. This is beyond lazy. I mean, the last time we have seen them was in the previous episode. We have seen them as plants, dragons and robots. So now we see them at least as something different, right? Now we see them as robots. Well, that's new, right? No, that's just reusing the same stuff we have already seen. I can live with reusing shots of the Enterprise and even the same cells with Kirk and Spock all over again, simply because they composite them differently in every episode and they animate their mouth differently, but reusing the same enemies even with the same sound effects, that's just a new level of lazy. Char gets captured by one of them. Oh my god, they actually animated a new flying sequence for this shot. The green guy opens the door, his only useful thing in the whole show, and then something strange happens. They get to a hole, and on the floor lies the soul. We can clearly see it sitting on the ground, or actually flying slightly above the ground, so they can simply walk to it, grab it and return home. But no, for some reason they need to come up with some elaborate plan how to reach it. Why? Was it supposed to be hovering over a big hole or something? I just don't get it, in the case that this is another animation error. Why? Did nobody actually watch the final episode before it went on air? Well, for some reason the team talks about a plan without anybody moving their mouth. Again, really great animation. And they somehow start climbing somewhere. So they climb up to a ledge which suddenly appears despite not being there in the previous shots. When we suddenly see that the soul is actually floating in air, at least in this shot, somebody shoots at them. What a twist! Char is the one who stole the soul and killed three previous expeditions. The reason is basically that their race got weak, so he wants them to become soldiers again. He somehow turns off the gravity and all start to float. So instead of simply killing them, he gives them a chance to fight. And what a surprise, Kerry and Spock catch him, grab the soul, Lara presses a button which looks like something I should censor, and they get transported back to the cat planet. And the most insulting thing happens, the cats erase everybody's memory. So Kirk and Spock return back to the Enterprise and nobody else knows about their mission. So their whole trip was absolutely for nothing, just for a good feeling they helped. I hate when TV shows do press the reset button in such a way. This is a very weird episode, it doesn't feel like a Star Trek episode. Despite the author being a writer on the original Star Trek series, this feels like a generic kids action flake with Kirk and Spock added to it for Star Trek fans. Let's talk about the characters. Why are they there? We need Kirk and Spock, I get it, but the rest of them? What does the lizard guy do in the whole show? He helps Kirk to push a rock and he carries M3 Green in one scene. Char is important, he's the villain of the episode. But M3 Green, why is he there? He did just one useful thing in the whole episode. He opened a door. Why is Lara there? The only thing she does is she offers herself to Kirk twice. 
I usually don't say stuff like this, but this was the final episode of season 1, so I do have a suggestion how to change the story. Imagine a slightly different story, let's say the Enterprise gets called to the score planet, because the birds have something what the Federation needs, for example some medicaments for an epidemic, uh, that sounds like a Star Trek premise. Kirk, Spock and McCoy try to negotiate with the leader of the score, but he wants them to help them find the soul. So they agree and the three of them plus uh, Char go on an adventure, in the end they find it and find out that Char is a traitor who stole the soul because he wanted to overthrow their king. In that case we would have a much more focused story, no annoying characters and it would feel more like a trick story. If I should describe this episode with just one word it would be messy or unfocused. It's still pretty enjoyable, but I honestly think the script uh, has way too many problems for me to give it uh, a higher rating than 5 out of 10. The most positive thing I can say uh, about this one is that at least they tried to do something else, something more unusual. Still, as always, these were just my opinions, let me know what do you think down in the comment section. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to watch any of the previous episodes, you should see links to some playlists on screen right now. And feel free to come back next week when I'll talk about um, the first episode of the second season of the animated series called The Pirates of Orion. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Bye.